Good morning, Unity of Payson. Good morning. I'm delighted to see you here in Sawmill Theater, those of you who are here. And I'm delighted to see you, all of you who have joined us uh, online for this hybrid service. I'm Reverend Neil Worthington. And again, I am uh, so appreciative of you being with us this morning. I know it's the right time and the right place, and we are the right ones. We are the right ones to be here to share in this experience. Would you join me in a moment of prayer as we begin this morning? As always, we say, God of all goodness, we are grateful. Grateful for the beauty of this day that begins to feel like fall, perhaps. This time when divine order is displayed as we move from one season to another, as we approach in a few days the equinox, the equal, the balance between dark and light. So we are grateful for the divine order that underlies all that there is, and also that divine order is a gift, an ability that we have been given as part of human creation, the ability to balance, to sequence and put in order our lives, led and impelled even by divine inspiration. So this morning as we gather, we are grateful for the order of this day. We are grateful for each one who has joined us either now in this present time or in the eternal now, perhaps listening to a recording later on. Again, we cannot help but be grateful for from that springs all good manifesting in our lives. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to unmute. It's time for welcome. My name is Donna and I am your welcome platform hostess today. Welcome to Unity of Payson. We're glad you're with us this morning. We want to recognize anyone who's new to Unity of Payson. If you're in the theater for the first time, we invite you to remain briefly after the service for meet and greet. If you're new online, please go to unity.org, uh, unityofpaisen.org, I'm sorry, and click on contact and leave us your contact information and give us uh, a little bit of feedback about the service. Um, you can also connect in chat uh, and leave us your email in chat and we will send you our weekly newsletter. Again, we warmly welcome you. And from our unity of pace and family, we say together, together, we love you. We bless you. We welcome you. And now it's time for our opening song. During the song, you're welcome to send greetings in the chat. And the song is If I Were Brave, Janice Stanfield. could not fail If I believed what the wind 
always fill up my sails. How far would I go? What could I achieve? Trusting the hero in me. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge where true believers dare to tread and never lose faith. Even when losing my way, what step would I take today if I? What we secretly dream. What would you ask if you knew you could have anything? Like the mighty oak sleeps in the heart of a seed. Are there miracles in you and me? You know there are. If I were brave, I'd want. Day, if I were brave, what would I do today? If I were brave, what would I do today? If I were brave, what would I do today? If I were brave, what would I do today? If I
Okay, well, I really wanted to speak earlier, but I was not allowed to unmute. So host, please allow me to unmute during the service. Thank you. Thank you. That's my first thank you. It's time for gratitudes. And we are grateful for those who support Unity of Payson with your time, with your talent, and with your treasure. We're also grateful for the events of each week. Last week, these included Morning Cafe, every morning, Monday through Saturday, in Tender's Circle on Thursdays. Uh, Neil led a class on the metaphysical understanding of sacred texts. We had an interview with Frosty on what's it all about anyway, and we had, uh, we will be having Energy Thursday. We're thankful for the technology that allows us to meet both in person and virtually. So, meditation and prayer. Unity is grounded in both of these. And we have trained prayer chaplains to support you. Our chaplains are available to pray with you if you have a prayer concern. You may call or text your request to our church phone. The number is on the screen. Our prayer team and silent unity will join you in prayer for 30 days and, and another 30 days at silent unity in the 24 seven vigil. All prayer requests are held sacred and confidential. Please leave a phone number and email with your request if you would like a chaplain to contact you personally. If you're here in person and would like prayer support today, please connect with one of our chaplains. The chaplains will be wearing a prayer stole. And our theme for September, order is our theme. I flow with the order of the universe. Today's speaker is Reverend Neil Worthington, and the title of his talk is To Act is to Manifest. Now it's time for our metaphysical moments. Truth transcends our physical experience of life and of our world. Please join with me as we consider this expression of truth. And today I'm reading from the Daily Word for Sunday, September 19th, 2021, and the word is free. And I like that word. Living from my divine nature frees me. Sometimes I feel limited when I don't think I have enough time, enough money, enough space, enough education, enough experience. These thoughts can occupy so much space in my mind that I begin to think limitation is the truth of life. The greater truth is that I am free and unlimited in spirit. Alive in God, I am free free to express all the love, wisdom, and strength of the divine as only I can. Because, you know, I'm an individualized expression of the divine, and so are you. What joy and liberation it is to know that nothing can separate me from my true spiritual nature. If I believe any circumstance in my life or any of my past actions obstruct or delay my progress, I now release that belief. Embracing and living from the divine presence, the Christ within me, I claim freedom from all limitation. And from Acts 17, 28, in Christ, we live and move and have our being. 
you know, uh, the Christ spirit within is what we honor at unity. And so as we remember, as we remember the Christ spirit within, we are lifted, we are lifted. We see a bigger picture. We know that all is unfolding as it should. And we are grateful. Thank you. And now our speaker, Reverend Neil Worthington, will share the message with us. It works better when I put my glasses on. So I can't see you as well that are here in the theater. Um, but I need them. <laughs> so closer to the mic. And maybe just a little bit up, Rick, if you will. Okay. I am grateful for these who do the technical work um, because it's often confusing for me and they provide great commitment uh, to be able to do this. And I'm thankful. But on to what I wanted to say. Have you ever watched a sprinter preparing for a race? This sprinter, of course, imagine this is a sprinter that's going to compete in the Olympics. This sprinter has spent months and months, if not years and years, training to be able to compete at this level. And so that's where the start is for him, that preparation, that training. But the sprinter comes to the event, comes to the track. And if you were to see him and see this in your mind's eye, you're going to see that sprinter looking at the blocks, those, um, what do I call it, the, the base from which he will push off as he begins to run and he situates his feet in those blocks. Um, then he takes his hand and puts it at the very brink of the start line, uh, merely a quarter inch away from the start line so he doesn't go over and disqualify himself. And he is ready for the race. Probably he runs through his mind again, the visualization of being able to run the race and to actually get to that point where he is the winner. And I say he, but it could be she as well. So he or she is seeing that podium that they stand on. They are seeing that medal that hangs around their neck. They are a winner. They have seen it before as they prepare and set themselves and get ready to start. Of course, then the starter has, after has, they've said ready and all the, the runners are ready, the starter says set. And if you remember that sprinter raises his back and gets ready to launch himself into that. I suspect that that, that image of the winning flashes through their mind again. So there they are, ready and set. And then of course, there's the bang of the starter's gun. The race. All the runners launch themselves forward, not looking at distractions on the side, not doing anything that would distract from being the winner, winner getting to that tape at the end that winning line and there. But you know what? We're gonna to talk today, this is a metaphor that we're gonna use. This race, this preparing, this getting ready, this getting set, and this action that we take. This is the metaphor we'll use, but I'd like you to know one thing, that we're not competing. We are not competing. 
because for all of us, we are winners. Have you ever seen a picture of um, the Special Olympics and seen a group of the Special Olympians who have every one of them a medal around their neck? Every one of them. So in this spiritual action race that we're about to run, or that we have been running for all of our spiritual journey, in this spiritual action race, we are all winners. First of all, we're created in perfection. Did you know that? Do you remember it? Do you claim it that we were created in perfection? Yes, we've made errors. Yes, we sometimes don't know where to go. We have some missteps, but we're created in perfection and we are claiming that and looking forward to that perfection manifesting, being realized in our lives. So I'd like to go through each of these things today. I think I'll turn off the blinking. I'll just leave the light on. Today, we're gonna talk about ready, set, go. If I were to retitle this message today, I would say, you're a winner. Ready, set, and go. Let me talk about ready. Getting ready in this spiritual race starts in the mind. Actually starts in the mind of the divine because that divine mind is all that we need to successfully run this race. We talk about divine and the divine mind and we speak about knowing all. We speak about having all power. We speak about all goodness. We speak about all presence. And these are attributes of the divine, the all that is God or by whichever name works for you. So getting ready starts in that divine place. And we've talked about this a little bit in the last couple of weeks, just to speak about it again. It happens in our mind as well in our consciousness and we tune to that divine mind to be able to express it in our own consciousness. We're living from the inside because the divine dwells within us. We're living from the inside out, not from the outside in. We live fully from the inside first and then we remember, we realize, we reclaim all that we are, all that, we cre cre uh, that we're created with, that Christ nature that is resident within us. So how do we do that? Well, for me, it starts with reflection. I often need to take a look at what's happened in my life to observe it and then know that maybe the me that's acting out there is not the real me. Maybe the observer has something to teach me. So I reflect and then I contemplate. I consider, I take time, I slow down to consider where I've been and where I'm going. My heart's desire that I want to manifest. Then of course, I spend time in the quiet. This is the place where I get my knowing, where I connect with my, with the divine in an intuitive way. This is the place where I am inspired, absolutely inspired to the action that will come. This is part of the getting ready. And then of course, there is at least in mind, the affirmation of what I know and what I am inspired to do. That's the ready part of it. So then there's also the set part of it. Connected as we are, when we ready ourselves for this spiritual action, 
we have access to a wonderful toolkit. If you've been with us, you've noticed that we're using a theme each month from the 12 powers. Those are the abilities that we're all given, abilities that we can claim and use for this spiritual journey. There are others as well. They resonate for you in a different way maybe than they resonate for me. There's peace, there's joy, there's grace. And then of course, a few of those 12 powers, faith, love, zeal, imagination. All of these abilities are our toolkit or originating in the mind of the divine, but gifts to us as human creation. So what do we do in collecting these tools in making this toolkit? Well, how do we do that? First of all, we immerse ourselves in them in any way that we can. We actually get into it. How do you do that? Well, for me, reading and listening is a big part of it. I love to read, of course, and some of our number, I'm thinking of our dear sister Frosty, <laughs> reads voraciously, and some of you do as well. Well, what do you choose for that reading? What do you choose for that listening? Choose that, which reflects those tools. Choose that inspiring reading. Choose what makes you ready to run that race. Gets you set for the process of acting. Then you also may want to do it, and I love this about our community. We have small groups within our community in tender circle. Um, drumming circles, we had one kind of the start of a drumming circle uh, up on the rim and sunset on the rim uh, a week ago or a little more than a week ago. We have morning cafe where we simply gather for a half an hour and share ourselves and the daily word or some other inspiring reading. We gather the support of the community around us. That's how we immerse ourselves in this idea to be set for action. We also take that affirmation that I talked about before and we make it very specific. Perhaps it's on our mirror with a post-it note, perhaps on the refrigerator, perhaps by the door as we leave. Betty, I remember you saying you'll put something by the door. And then you remember, you affirm that. The affirmation is a wonderful, wonderful tool that can be very simple, or it can be something that really reflects your journey. The simple is taking those tools, that faith, that love, that imagination, that zeal, that release, and just putting it together with I am. I am love. What an affirmation. I am power. I am strength. I am zeal, I am imagination. So that affirmation and making it very specific and practicing it, not letting yourself be distracted from the practice. So easy to kind of let it, do it for a while and let it slip, but not being distracted from that and moving ahead, being set for the action that is to come. One of the listening posts that I have is uh, through a website called Unity, truthunity.net. And on there, there are a number of recordings. Oh, a lot of recordings. And they're so inspiring to me. I was listening yesterday to one uh, by Eric Butterworth, one of our great Unity teachers. And so I, as I listened, I heard him say, Wherever I am, I am. <laughs> it sounded kind of quizzical to me at first. Wherever I am, I am. But then I looked at it a little bit different. And I thought, in whatever situation, 
I find myself. I am the Christ nature from within is there. That is ready to be expressed. So I say, in whatever situation I am, I am. I am divine. Remember, we are not only fully human, we are fully divine as well. So that's what it means to be set. And that's how I approach it. And then there's go. When that starter's gun fires and I am ready to pursue, to run this spiritual activity journey. So here's what's involved in that for me. And this is where I really want you to hang in there with me and consider how this may uh, show up in your life. So first of all, when I'm going, I know where I'm going. Um, a runner doesn't come to the track not knowing how long the race is he or she is going to run. Doesn't come to the wrong stadium. Knows where he or she is going. Just knows. So drawing on this ready and this set, we look within for the knowing that we have. And when we act, we act not only out of knowing, but also out of inspiration. This of course comes from what we've been feeding ourselves with. We act from knowing, we act from inspiration. A couple of things that could prevent us, could hinder us from this action. One of them, is not being able to allow. Manifesting or getting that which our hearts desire, arriving that at that, realizing that, having it be full-fledged right in front of us, sometimes doesn't take work. I must say this is an area where I continue to learn. I'm a Mr. Fix-It. I love to fix my problems and manufacture the way to do it and create a strategy. I love to do that for other people too. I'll, I'll fix them if I possibly can. But sometimes it's not a matter of strategy. Sometimes it's a matter of just allowing because we are co-creators with the divine as we've spoken about in other times. And in that co-creation, sometimes our action is simply to allow, the art of allowing. So not only the art of allowing, there's the idea of collecting, collecting the courage that's required. This spiritual journey, this race that we run can be risky. It can feel very risky at times. And we have to collect the courage to do that. It's there, it's also available to us. I always used to think, just a personal note, that my name, Neil, meant courage and that it came from Cornelius. I kind of thought that was pretty neat uh, that my parents would give me such a name. But then I, I, I Googled it again and I looked it up and I found out that maybe that's not so. Uh, in fact, it's not because Neil, as I spell it, N-E-A-L, comes from Irish origins. And well, it's pretty close to courage. It means champion. I have the ability to become the winner if I will but take that courage and that champion mindset and adopt it for my life. So collecting the courage to take the risk is important. You know, it's true that when we get to a reckoning place in our life, we are not likely to regret the things that we do. We are likely to regret the things that we didn't do. Not likely to 
regret the risks we take, not, but likely to regret the risks that we did not take. So the courage is important, that champion mindset. And then there's the simple one, just do the deed, do the deed. As Nike would say, just do it. Sometimes <laughs> you can imagine a runner that hesitates in the blocks there, the gun fires and he's still sitting there in the blocks, just hesitant. Are you like that or am I like that on our spiritual journey? This spiritual activity race, this race that brings us from heart's desire to manifestation, that appearing in our life. Just do the deed. And then finally, run the race, get in the race. If you're not in the race, you're certainly not gonna be a winner. If you would be a winner, get in the race. Move from desire to manifestation by saying ready, getting ready, then set, and then go. Now this can go another way. We could treat ready, set, go from solely from our human perspective, from uh, a strategy that's produced by our ego. It could be that when we're getting ready, we don't stop to put our mind in a place to choose consciously to do what it is that will bring us that which we desire. We don't see ourselves as winners. We doubt ourselves. We doubt the tools we have. We doubt the ability that we have to use them. Then in getting set, we get so distracted so easily. We don't hold on to that which inspires us. We don't hold on to that which helps us to know. We don't use that intuition, that God-given intuition that's within us all. We are not set for the race. And finally, we don't go. Out of timidity, we don't wanna take a risk. We don't wanna take that knowing that's accessible to us and put it to work. It could go that way, but it need not. So we go back to that divine journey of action, that divine race that we run. And we say, ready, I'm basing that in who I am and my connection with the divine set. I'm taking the tools that I've got and I'm putting them to use and go. I'm not being hesitant. I'm going, I'm taking the risk. If I were brave was the song that we had for our opening song. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge. I would be brave. There's a beautiful scripture in the sacred text that's uh, the Christian scriptures. And I like it so much, I wanna read just a little bit for, uh, for you. If I can, well, I guess if I turn on this light, it'll work better. It's from Philippians, the letter to the Philippians. And here's how it goes, beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is how I learned that as a child. But I've redone it just a little bit, if I can find, the, find the, my paraphrase for this. And I put it like this, because this is where I'm at at this point in my life, in my spiritual understanding. I press toward the goal for the prize of the calling to come up higher 
to come up higher, to live out the nature of the Christ within. So I say, ready, set, go. You are a winner if you're in the race. So step into those winner's shoes. Get into the race. Get off of the sidelines. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Neal. I'm all ready and set, so here I go. It's time to prepare for meditation as we listen to our meditation song from Karen Drucker, Blessing to the World. to go into a time of meditation but before we do I'd like to just set the stage and Tom if we can go back to those slides that uh, I'd like to review this will give us an entree into meditation Tom, if we can get that very first slide back. There we go. Ready, set, go. You are a winner. You are a winner. In this spiritual action race. 
and the next. For ready. Most important thing here is to connect with God or all that is or source or I like to say for purposes of this time, divine mind. Get ready. And then get set. Get set. Be ready. I don't want to use the word ready again. Attract to you those things that you desire. Catch those butterflies, that light that's going to enable you, using the tools that you've got, enable you to get to heart's desire and the manifestation. And then finally, go. Take action. Go. Take action. Tom, you can take that down now. Because I'd like us now to just quiet ourselves. And take these truths into the silence where they will have their impact. Breathe, let go of everything that is in the past, everything that is in your future, and just simply be and be here now. So as you breathe and find yourself in this eternal now, consider this. In the eternal now, we are in no way separate from the divine. We are connected. We are one with the divine, know we are one. Feel that oneness with all that is. Look a little deeper. You'll find it. I am the Christ dwells in me, waiting to be expressed. Feel that connection with the divine that you are. And then almost like you're going to the next segment of the journey. Open your mind to all of the tools that you have for this race or this journey. Let those tools float into your awareness. Those that you most need will come to you. Those that address this situation and this time in your life will come to you. Take them and put them in your backpack. You're gonna use them. Ready yourself. Set yourself for this journey. And then take this into the silence. What do I know? What is mine to do? What is for me in this time? divine time and take that that comes to you take that action which may be risky which may take courage 
and contemplate it as we go into the silence. You know what that action is for you. Contemplate that action, that next step. Not everything, just that next step as we go into the silence, ready to take action. contemplating that action that's yours to perform. You've taken a bold step. You've worked on it on the inside. You've asked yourself to come up higher. Take that to yourself fully, strongly, and then bring yourself back to this time. Bring your awareness to the place where you are. Bring your awareness to your world, your situations, knowing what is yours to do inspired to do it, willing to take the risks and reap the rewards. And so it is. And now is the time for us to share our gifts, our tithes and offerings. We greatly appreciate your gifts that support this ministry. They not only support this ministry, but they also tithe out to the larger community. We'll be playing an offering song, and as you listen, you'll have time to make a contribution. The offering basket will be passed in person here in Payson. Passed in person in Payson. And if you're attending virtually, just trying to wake you up a little bit there, the information for giving is on the slides. If you go to unityofpayson.org and click on the donate slash support button at the top, it will take you to this donate button on the screen. So now, please, with me, bring your attention to your gift at this time and call to mind your heart's desire. Together, let's affirm, freely we give and freely we receive. And so it is. i 
my decision, my decision right here and now. Love is my decision. It's up to me to stand on that bridge. Love is my decision. No one else can make me forgive. And once I decide to change, And now it's time for the dedication of the offering. We're grateful for these gifts. Let's bless the givers. Let's bless the gifts. And let's see how these beautiful gifts will circulate and go where they need to go. Because they're ready and they're set. And we see it with a grateful heart. We allow it with a grateful heart. And together, let's say the dedication of the offering. Divine love through us blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. We are abundantly prosperous. And we give thanks for this knowing and these deeds. And so it is. Amen and amen. So next Sunday's speaker will be Dr. Donna Steckel. That's me. Psychologist and licensed unity teacher. And I'm going to be talking about everything we've been talking about order this month and putting it all together. So again, the theme for the month is order. I flow with the order of the universe. 
And I'm ready to talk about a few announcements. So we have Good Morning Cafe on Zoom at 9.30, Monday through Saturday. Please come and connect. We welcome you to join with us as we read the daily word or other inspirational uh, information, and then we discuss it and share inspiration with one another. Uh, I'm doing a practice group for nonviolent communication for those who have uh, attended a class on this with me previously. You're welcome to attend. Uh, it is Tuesday, September 21st at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. And this is where we get to put into practice the principles of nonviolent communication in our lives. And it's a love offering to unity of peace. A Course in Miracles happens the same day at six o'clock Mountain Time. And that's led by Reverend Neil Worthington. And it's well attended. Then, of course, talking about attended, we have the Intenders Circle every Thursday at noon. And Tuesday, September 21st, no, no, no. The fourth Thursday, September 23rd, is highway cleanup. Meet at the parking lot in front of Big Lot Store at 8 in the morning. And now we have a PS from Neil. I read those out of order. Sorry, Tom. Neil, you're muted. Okay, I was muted. The online uh, class, uh, Course in Miracles, will be only virtually done uh, at this time. We're being really cautious in terms of uh, meeting together in small and enclosed places. So, uh, Course in Miracles on Zoom, Tuesday. 6 p.m. Then there's uh, also that highway pickup that we talked about. Eight o'clock in the morning, because that's a cool time. Um, there have been three of us here at Unity of Payson that have faithfully done that. And we need some uh, new energy in this. So if you're at all called to come and join us for oh, less than an hour, of walking up and down the highway and keeping it clean and, and uh, contributing to our community this way. I invite you to join us. We'll be uh, in the front of uh, where Big Lots is out toward 260. Uh, you'll find us there for sure. Uh, we'll be wearing safety vests. Uh, please uh, come if you can and join in on this way to serve our community. I think that's all I've got. And so we'll move now to our closing of the service which is our uh, peace song and then the prayer for protection. If you can, in the theater, if you can stand here and everybody get ready and imagine we're using that power of imagination that we're holding hands. Here we go. Yes, there is peace on earth and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there
and the prayer for protection. Wait for the recording. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you all for being here virtually and in person. Let us know if you're virtual, that you've been here. Send us some sort of a comment and some feedback. We would appreciate it. And uh, stay and uh, uh, cautiously interact with each other. The lobby is nice and big, and we'll uh, mask up to, uh, to, to ensure caution. See you uh, at the next activity soon. Blessings, everyone. Everyone have a great evening. Peace well, how about a great day? Yeah, there we go. <laughs>